Hey guys, Dean here. Anyone who has a phobia of bees should definitely not play this Minecraft mod. And if you don't have a phobia of bees, you're definitely going to have one after playing this mod. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the Bumble Zone mod. This is a dimension which is basically full of bees, wax and honey. And it's something which I definitely don't want to explore. But I'm doing it just for you guys because I have a phobia of wasps. But to be honest, bees are pretty friendly. So I guess I can put up with them. So I'm going to show you how to go to the dimension. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so to begin in the mod, basically we need to find a beehive. So we could find this by going to a flower forest or anywhere where we typically know a beehive would spawn. We can go ahead and manually find one but that'd take a while but lucky for me I'm pretty lucky. So here's a beehive. We found one pretty quick. We have a friendly little bee over here who we're not going to harm because we need to go to the bumble zone dimension and we don't want to mess that up. To enter the bumble zone we need to find a bee nest or a beehive. Even modded ones are also supported too. All we then do is grab an ender pearl over here and then we throw it at this. Boom! B Enderman Intrusion. And now we're in the Bumble Zone itself. A really beautiful dimension, might I add. So we got the achievement over here. Enter Bumble Zone Dimension by throwing the Ender Pearl at a beehive or a bee nest. And we also got Buzzing Bumbling Bumble Zone. Enter the Bumble Zone Dimension by any means. Maybe there's some other means we don't know about. And I know you can enter on a mount or a vehicle, but I don't want to try that. That involves abusing pistons, which I'm not really in the mood for. So this is the Bumble Zone. This place is amazing. And as you can see, all these honey and wax blocks all around. If we jump off, we're going to nosedive straight into the water, but we want to explore. This mod has quite a few biomes. It has some structures and it also has a boss or I believe a boss. I guess you could call it a boss. So we're going to do all that in this video and also show some of the items too. So, Geronimo. Okay, that was pretty satisfying. Wait, I'm not sure if this water is actually just honey. It looks like honey. Surely it'd have a thicker consistency if it was honey though. Let's give a free cam view of the Bumble Zone dimension. We're basically going through what's the equivalent of like a ravine right now down the middle. And I'll kind of give you a showcase of all of the terrain in this dimension because it's basically like we're going through mountains in the overworld so there's a very mountainous terrain here and inside it basically consists of all these pockets of caves which kind of serve as hollowed out honeycomb holes so if you've seen a beehive this basically functions in a very similar way to how beehives do in real life that's kind of what it's mirrored off of right and there's also a lot of dense fog in this dimension too so it kind of adds an eerie factor even though it's not a horror mod so let's check out the biomes first of all because why not? There's quite a few biomes in the Bumble Zone which are added by this mod and you can see all of these below. Now there's currently six. I thought there were seven but there seems to be six. So this is the Crystal Canyon. So I've actually spawned in some water, some shallow water in some kind of river or stream right now and you can see we have crystallized honey which shines all the way underwater on the ground which looks awesome and we also have crystallized honey structures and spires all alongside this riverside and i have to say this dimension looks absolutely amazing this looks really cool because you can really distinguish between the terrain types here with this huge big honeycomb spire right next to this small crystal lake and you can already see some examples i haven't even showed you any mobs yet but this bee over here which is one of the cool special bees which i will show you momentarily later in the video so this is just an overview of this dimension and its first biome which also leads us onto the hive pillar so this is the hive pillar the hive pillar is the large support columns which uphold the space in this dimension okay we're inside one of those large support columns and you'll see we kind of have this see-through honey parts of it see-through there's holes in it over here and there's so many different blocks which make up this biome in fact we can even take a look at them we have this honey web here which you can see this is honey web and then we also have honey crystal crystals and honeycomb blocks so there's so many different block types on here now we've spawned inside a cave and we're kind of slow moving but you can see this is broken up into different layers okay so the higher we go up the further away we're going to go but it opens up to small pockets of rooms which are inside these cave holes which i showed you earlier inside the honeycomb mountain and terrain then we also have the hive wall itself which i guess we we're kind of already on top of right so the hive wall is basically a biome which is the flat walls of the dimension which are kind of like these faces on the cliffs so this is the hive wall itself okay and it's mostly the outside of the hive now you saw the huge honeycomb terrain and you thought this whole place was mountainous well in fact it actually isn't this is the pollinated fields now the pollinated fields is basically a flat pollen covered area around the pollinated pillars which i'm going to show you after and it's covered in all this pollen over here and obviously that refers to bees who obviously collect pollen when they're in the whole process 
process of landing on a flower, right? I really like this biome because there's these cool particles which are coming off the pollen. And the block variation in this dimension mod is a lot different to what I remember it being when the mod was first released and I featured it in a top 10 video. I feel like this mod has actually come really far. I'm super impressed with this mod. So this adds a lot of cool buildable blocks which you can utilize when placing down honey. Now you may have noticed over here all these particles coming from somewhere. That's actually coming from this special honey slime mob. Now we'll get onto the mobs later but I thought that was cool to actually point out because I could see that from a mile away. Okay we're inside the pollinated pillar itself so you can already see the pollen and the particles from the pollen coming off the blocks on the ground. So we're actually inside the pollinated pillars over here which are those huge big pillars hence the name right which arch over the pollinated fields down below and it's these huge structures which are covered in that small layer of pollen which tower all the way up into the sky in the skybox of the world and you can see how complex these pillars are and the actual builds of these structures. Then we have the sugar water floor so this takes up the rest of the space in the dimension and it basically fills the land with sugar water. So when we were referring to this water or this fluid earlier this mystery fluid and we we're wondering is this honey because it doesn't seem thick enough to be honey this is actually part of this particular biome so this makes up this water and fluid part of the dimension this is actually sugar water so we've confirmed what it actually is right now so before we move on to the next section let's explain some things about this dimension while we have the chance so bees spawn at a higher rate in this dimension of course as you typically expect and honey slimes which are those new types of slimes which we saw earlier are also also going to spawn around here too. But you can also find spiders, cave spiders, endermen and phantoms in this dimension surprisingly but they're actually a really low frequency of spawn rate okay so it's kind of rare to find those in this dimension. But if you do go below y equals 40 on the coordinate values you can see slimes regularly in slime chunks but this also might be something which can be hard for you to find also. Now the walls in this dimension basically comprise of these honeycomb holes which are filled with the honeycomb blocks and honey blocks which we've seen and these honeycomb brood blocks which some seem to be empty. There's also a pretty nice cave system inside this biome or this dimension rather which you may have noticed as we went inside the different biomes which are made up of those walls and pillars. There's some sticky honey residue and those honey webs we saw earlier which are splattered throughout these caves. So there's some really nice block diversity as I mentioned initially. Now we will hopefully find some later if we're lucky enough but there is actually bee dungeons inside this dimension too which are usually found in those caves filled with the honey crystals and lit candles which are inside the dungeon rooms themselves and they have a lot of the honeycomb brood blocks around them and honey cocoon blocks with items inside them so there is actually lootable honeycomb blocks. Also some of these bee dungeons are actually spider infested which are actually rare to find but there is cobwebs, cave spiders and spider spawners inside too so that adds a little bit of extra threat level but there's some good XP which you can find from those specific dungeon types especially the spider ones and also string farms too so that might be useful for resources. Now one thing to note that's pretty cool as well is we're going to have a look at the items now and some of the other features of the mod. So one cool thing you'll notice when going on the creative menu is there is actually some new music tracks added through this mod and there's specifically music tracks added through the music disc items and I really like the pixel art or the textures for the music discs themselves. Let's compare them to the normal standard Minecraft discs. Obviously they look the same but they're a little bit different right? Right, because the discs are actually orange themed around the dimension. I kind of like that they broke away from the normal black hood discs to add something more unique. And also I do have to say that the new music discs added in the recent Minecraft updates also look pretty cool too. So these are the new music discs. It adds the tune Honey Bee by Ratface Boy, Flight of the Bumblebee by Rimsky Korsakov. And these music tracks I haven't listened to, but it's really nice that they have unique music added throughout the mod. Now, of course, if you have music turned on, then you can experience some of these naturally as well. For an example, the honeybee tune plays occasionally when you're actually in the dimension itself if you don't want to use it in the jukebox. And also, the other disc, which is Flight of the Bumblebee, plays when you get Wrath of the Hive. So that's also something to note too. I believe Wrath of the Hive is some kind of potion effect, which we hopefully will experience later. If we go into advancements over here, we can see there's an advancement system in this mod, which adds some really cool advancements. And I believe over here, you can see all the new advancements which are added. Now the good thing about this is they actually sprout off all these advancements off this special bumblebee tree which obviously begins when you enter the dimension although when you start doing certain things in Minecraft vanilla it will create other tabs for those different sections but for the most part you can just start off and jump into the bumble zone straight away if you have the resource to do so if you're playing creative. These advancements are pretty cool you have 84 total of 84 advancements in bumble
Rumble Zone. And these teach you actually parts of the mod. So if you're kind of unsure about the progression, what you should be doing, and maybe you haven't watched this video yet, then the advancements is usually the thing which you'd refer to to actually get going and learn how to play the mod and what you should be doing based on steps and stages, right? So this is a really cool part of this mod. I really like mods that add achievements. It basically functions like a questing system in this mod, which is really cool. So let's take a look at structure, shall we? So the first one we're gonna take a look at is the cell maze structure. So as you can see, this one is actually just above sea level and it's filled with many of the unique blocks and items from this mod with some cool lootable blocks too, which you can actually see over here in these lootable jars, which are those honey cocoon blocks, I think, or maybe these are just specialized jars. And you can see all all this webbing all along these blocks too. With this structure, we can basically explore and get some loot. And also inside the honey cocoon blocks, which I'm just gonna search and show you as an example, just so you know what I'm talking about, which is these here. So these are these loot jars, which I just showed you. So inside these, there's a chance to find a specialized item. So first of all, we have items like pollen puff, honey crystals, honeycomb brood blocks, which I mentioned earlier. Then we have honey crystal shards and more of these different blocks, but you can get lucky, okay? So if you go around and loot these rooms, you can find some pretty unique items in here, but it's all about the look of the draw in what we find. So you might have to explore a few of these. I also do like these candles. This is just a basic Minecraft orange candle, but it really suits the room. And then if we explore, you might find some more lootable containers, but it's kind of protected by this wall over here of webbing, which covers it up. So it may be a little bit hard to find it, but you can see it is actually multi-tiered. So we can go down to a second floor. So this webbing covers the rest of the dungeon because this is kind of like a dungeon it's a maze and it covers it up but if you break it you can go down below into the different rooms okay also this middle bit really reminds me of ender portals so let's jump down below onto the next floor which kind of looks very similar and you need to be careful because you will fall through this weapon and you can see there's different blocks here now we can find honey bottles inside here oh okay we can hear bees i believe we have bees inside here oh we have tiny bees <laughs> that's pretty cool now this block here is important to take note of okay now we're inside the hive pillar biome and this block that you're looking at is the honey brood block so all of these bees are being attracted to the center. Now, this is also a specialized item, which you may find. This is the stinger spear. Now, this is another one of those items which I probably should have waited till later to show you. But just while we're in the biome, I'm just going to show you quickly. And this item actually poisons on hit. You can see I actually poisoned a bee with its own type of stinger, which is actually pretty funny. This is a spear which infects with poison because you basically have a stinger on a spear, which is really cool. And you can pick them up too. I think it's a one use item. I think you throw it like a spear and then pick it up. So there's some pretty good loot inside this dungeon, right? This maze. And these brood blocks are everywhere and they're marked with these bee faces on them. So you really can't miss them. These kind of take a long time to actually explore these structures, but it's really worth it because you'll find a lot of loot. But you have to be really careful because you can easily miss these jars. Inside here, we have another loot room. So so we have enchanted leather pants, which are dyed. So there's some really random loot in the loot tables for these things. We have candles, honeycomb, sticky honey residue, honey blocks, full honey blocks, bee stingers. There is some pretty unique loot, which I'm finding, which is different to what we found before. And we'll drop onto the floor below as well, because like I said, there's so many floors and tiers to this labyrinth. That's why it's called a cell maze, because it's made up of all these tiered structures, which are kind of like cells and there's multiple floors. Okay, let's drop down further. Oh, snap. Okay, I showed you something which I probably shouldn't have. I believe this is the queen bee. Let me just double check. Okay, this is the bee he moth. That's a pretty interesting play on words. So I'm just going to give you a quick look at this mob in its natural space because I'll most likely showcase it later in the video and I want to show you where the mob actually spawns itself in case I forget to reference that. But that thing is an absolute monster. Look at that. So we have climbable honey webs over here and a ton of different loot pieces. Now this behemoth is basically like a boss, right? The reason why you can tell this is a boss too is because we have the custom armor set over here which we gain just by picking them off here. So we have the Stinger Spear, the full adventures gear, and a weapon. We have a shield, the crystal shield, which I'm not gonna wear just yet. And we also have this helmet, which we can wear too. So I'll give you a close look at the armor later, but that grants us an achievement, which is the greatest weapon and armor that B Dimension have. So this is end game loot and gear, guys. This is super cool. And then we have a ton of containers. So typically you're gonna find the best loot, like we have shields, 
the level six shield we got right next to the boss because I guess that's the prize. Obviously, the boss is not going to let you take that loot though, guys. That's just because I'm in creative mode. You're going to have to literally fight blood, sweat and tears to get that. But yeah, that's kind of like the peak of this dungeon, right? Inside the cell maze. But yeah, there's a ton of loot in here. Now, I've actually been looking for a specific type of item, which I can't yet find. So I might just spawn it to show you. But you really want to try and aim to go to the bottom floor of these structures because as you can see, the closest area to the boss is you just have so much loot and spoils of war, which you're going to get. Now, the item I want to show you now before I forget, which you can get from one of these places, is actually the honey compass. So along with the normal compass over here and these modded compasses, which are from different mods, we have the honey compass, okay? So the honey compass, it gives you this achievement, Dora the Bee Explorer. Activate the honey compass's tracking locating abilities. So it gives us this honey compass structure, okay, over here. Basically, this locates the closest throne pillar structure. This is a special compass which has the name Honey Compass, the Rhone Pillar on it. So I think you need to naturally find this Honey Compass. It gives us this structure item, but I think when you naturally find it, it's binded to a specific structure. But when you find it, basically it allows you to find that structure. And it has a one out of 70 chance to be found in Honey Cocoons, which is the loot jars, which I've showed you inside, which is these. It has a one out of 70 chance to be found in these. So that's why it was so rare for me to actually find that and I hadn't found it yet, because it has a super low spawn chance. But when you do actually find one of those boss rooms which i showed you where the armor stand is there's a higher chance for the compass to be inside one of these containers which is around a one out of 20 chance so it's always advisable if you haven't found it yet to rush to the boss room and loot all of these compasses around that behemoth boss to try and see if it's in there because it's a higher chance you're going to find it in there right and as you can see so far no luck so i haven't actually found it in here but if I was to find it, that will probably be the first place I'd look. Okay, so the next one is the Throne Pillar. Now, I got this random achievement, the Power of Sticky. Generate redstone power from a special web of honey. I didn't do that, but I guess it just gave it me. So the Throne Pillar, this is the next structure we wish to explore. So you can see the structure is marked by all these candles around here and all these specialized blocks. So that's why you know that you found the structure. Now, you probably saw mountains and had no clue what I was talking about. This is the throne pillar. This is the structure you're working towards finding, okay? This is a webbed spire, which kind of looks like a wizard's tower, built entirely out of wax and honey blocks and all these crystals jousting off the side. And this spawns very rarely throughout the dimension. But you have to use that special honey compass I showed you before, the naturally spawning one, which you find, otherwise it doesn't work. The reason why this structure is so useful to find is because you'll find the queen bee which i mentioned earlier inside which is not exactly typically what you'd expect so the queen bee is something that you can actually trade with when we enter this structure you probably saw the queen bee there let me just give you a little bit of a peek that is the queen bee it has like a colored purple and red crown on that's so cool so when we enter here though the problem you're going to run into is is you get mining fatigue i don't know if you'll get it straight away let me see if i can change game mode okay mining fatigue three so you get number three and this permanently stacks so it's not going to time out now the only way not to get the mining fatigue from this structure is you need to have what's called essence of the bees okay so this is a special item we'll mention later so let me just take this item it looks like we're eating it but we're kind of taking it right and this is gonna take away the mining fatigue so we're gonna fly away from the structure first because otherwise it's pointless and then we're gonna use this and once we use it, it gives us all these particles over here and it looks like nothing's happening but let's go back to the structure just to show you boom now we're on here and we don't get mining fatigue because we've got essence of the bees activated. So it's like a permanent buff which helps the harmful effect not be applied. We cheated to get up here but I don't feel guilty at all. So let's go explore. So we have jelly flowing down the entrance which is just awesome. We have purple jelly coming down here and this nice little humble abode. It's almost like this queen bee has its own man cave or woman's cave I guess. I don't know what you call that. So the queen bee is absolutely massive. I thought this was the queen bee, but the queen bee has this huge big tail and massive stinger. So if I saw this in real life, I'd just run away. And also there's loot inside here. So we have this bumblebee chest plate, which you can find here. And also little pockets of rooms with candles and flowers on the side. Also, if you drop in the honey, it gives us regen, which permanently stacks while we're in there so we can regen and we can get free loot with these really nice armor pieces over here and we'll compare those to the armor pieces we got inside the dungeon momentarily because these are honey bee gear too but they're actually enchanted so we have this bee over here the queen bee who looks just like Jabba the Hutt. I feel like I'm inside Jabba's sail barge or Jabba's palace in Tatooine so here's the queen bee over here or the bee queen so this is a passive mob 
if you didn't notice. If I jump into survival mode, it's not going to kill me because the queen bee or bee queen doesn't actually want to hurt me, surprisingly. We need to right click while holding items or drop items in front. Now when I did that, there was like a particle. So if I right click pollen puff, right click this structure, this compass, it will come up with this particle, I believe, when it doesn't want to trade that thing. Now, if you experiment with this, you can see which tradable items are possible to trade with it based on what you give it and what items that it doesn't want. Now, there's a trade list of possible items and you can also add more trades in the config. And basically, you get a specialized advancement path with rewards after you trade with it, which kind of serves as a replayable quest, right? Now, you can only find this mob inside this throne pillar. So if you find other structures you're not going to find a queen bee this is the only way to locate them in the mod so we could typically just try and offer it some items we right click it doesn't want this damn it's getting kind of angry maybe it wants the shield okay it doesn't want that what does the queen bee want i have no clue what it actually wants from me let's try and trade it generic items like honey crystal shards or honey buckets it doesn't want residue ah okay so it likes honey buckets. So get a bucket of honey, repurpose honey items by smelting them, which we didn't do because we spawned it. The queen's desire. So this is the quest line I was talking about. A quest line bestowed upon you, complete the advancements for rewards. If you give honey buckets, that seems to work. If you right click with honey buckets, it kind of functions exactly like piglins do in the nether trading system, right? So it just flows all these items out. It's kind of like an infinite item factory because we're in creative. So we just give it infinite items and we get infinite randomized items for its loot table. But if we go in the advancement screen, you can see the queen's desire. So we have quests. So craft 24 bees nests or 24 bees hives. Smash and kill 64 spiders for their ickiness. So if we complete those, we'll get rewards and then we can re-complete them or replay them by trading with a bee again. So that's the cool system in the mod. So in Bumble Zone, we also have three new enchants, okay? So the first one is Comb Cutter, and we apply this to either swords or shears. And there's only one level of this, but it lets the tool or weapon mine all comb-based blocks really fast. So you can mine wax, hive blocks, nest blocks super quick and also doubles the honeycomb output which is dropped from beehives and bee nest too so it's actually a pretty cool thing for loot potent poison is kind of like normal poison as an enchant but it's applied to trident like items so that means that it works on the stinger spear so let's go ahead and test that let's put the stinger spear in potent poison on it so we can now enchant that which makes it super overpowered which is kind of cool and basically when the weapon hits a non-undead type mob, it inflicts a nasty kind of poison on them. So this already applies a poison, the Stinger Spear, so it's already overpowered. But with Potent Poison 3, which is the maximum tier of it, it increases the potency of the poison and the effect level, and the duration lasts longer when on the Stinger Spear in comparison to any other items. This is a really cool, powerful item. I'm going to throw it at this Queen Bee, and you can see how it's poisoned it over time. That's how overpowered this thing is. It's a really powerful item. Now, if I was to go in survival mode, this bee would definitely not give me a chance to live. You can see now the queen bee is not passive. It's passive until attacked or friendly until attacked. And it will still get poisoned. It won't move because, unfortunately, it's, it's eating too much honey, just like Jabba the Hutt. But it will actually attract these bees, which will all sting me and kill me. And we'll also get this achievement, not the bees. Make the mistake of attacking a bee while under Wrath of the Hive, which is Wrath of the Hive 4, when literally every bee known to man in the vicinity comes to try and take my head. So that definitely wasn't a good choice on my behalf. Now all these other bees are hit with the spear are just dying, and this queen bee is just attacking nothing. But if we punch the queen bee, which is actually pretty funny, we can actually punch it. Wait, we can actually move it? This is unrelated to the mod showcase, but wouldn't it be actually funny if we would just hit the queen bee out of its own hive and just like try and make it like drop down? Wait, can we actually do that? No, don't punch it back. Wait, let's try that. No, we need to destroy these blocks, the lower blocks, so it can drop down. Wait, if I can do this, this will be monumental. This will be historical. Wait. Oh, oh my god, we hit it out of his own hive. We traded with it. We extorted it for everything we needed, and then we betrayed it. The next one is Pollinated Streams, another structure which is kind of rarer, and it spawns lower down in the pollinated pillars and field biomes I showed you. And this is kind of like these small tunnel networks filled with pollen and that sugar water we showed you before. It's a really tight space. The ceiling height is very low, and sometimes this is where you can find those cave spider rooms I mentioned earlier. But there's nothing really too crazy in this. It's just kind of like a small tight knitted space which is kind of claustrophobic so if i go into spectator view over here i'll just show you basically one of those cobweb spider ridden rooms like i mentioned before so this is one of those spider dungeons so this is what they look like inside 
So this is where you can get that achievement for killing the spiders and you can also find this specialized dungeon which you'll have to destroy these spawners around and this is filled with candles and crystals. Not quite sure where the loot is actually located in these rooms. This is in the hive wall right here and it's filled and covered by this honey crystal which is like blocking entry from all angles. Now I find it quite hard to locate right now but somewhere in here there is actually a honey cave room structure. This honey cave structure is a custom structure that's difficult to find and you can only find it within hive pillar and pollinated pillar biomes and it's a small cave like room usually with two behemoths inside but you find those loot containers honey fluid and those mobs inside but when you go inside it's nothing too crazy of a structure it just has some mobs and some loot inside right i found it this is the honey cave room so like i said this is a medium sized cave like room you'll see we have these behemoths these huge big mobs which we saw earlier inside we have honey cocoons which are for our loot and also the honey fluid which is in the center block over here and we also have some of these slimes which we've seen a little bit in the other portions of the dimension. So this is basically another loot room. So these behemoths, I didn't really show you these guys earlier too much, but these are like some of the tougher mobs inside here. And you can see even with poison and using the spear repeatedly, they're kind of hard to kill. But this is just another treasure room which you may run into. As you can see, that behemoth just dropped a stinger. Not really too much loot. So these behemoths are mobs that can actually be tamed. Let's go ahead and get some honey bottles. This may be confusing. You probably didn't actually think this would work, right? Let's right click on these guys. And boom, best friends forever. Bee movie, but it's 300% larger. Tame a behemoth with buckets of honey. So you can use buckets or bottles and you get the taming and animal achievements. So you can actually tame these. They will follow you, but only if you're holding a honey bucket. Okay, so once we get a honey bucket, the pet bonding system allows it to follow you, but only if we have this honey bucket. Now you can see I've got protection of the hive now, which I think is because I've tamed this behemoth and they fly quickly towards you. And this can mean that they can return to you up to 200 blocks away. So we basically have a pet, which is kind of cool. We can also ride them. We just put a saddle on them and we can literally ride them. Now, I think we have full control of this guy. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. Right, so we're riding a bee. I don't know why the bee has this outline on it, but we're literally riding a behemoth through the Bumble Zone thing. This is perhaps the coolest part of this dimension. We can actually now fly and experience the dimension in the way that it should be played with this bee. Now, unfortunately, this guy doesn't go too fast, but this is super cool. Having a flying mount inside Minecraft, who would have thought? I mean, horses are super boring, but actually flying. This is just like the Dragon Mounts 2 mod meets a Dimension mod. And the more that we feed them and the more that we ride them, it basically improves the friendship bond, right? So let me see if I can just land this thing because I don't want to experiment this while I'm actually on it because that might get me killed. Oh, okay, didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's keep feeding this. Let's make it fat. Okay, you can see the love hearts keep coming off, right? I'm just going to keep spamming it. I'm going <laughs> to make it addicted to sugar. So I'm just going to keep giving it sugar over here. It's kind of landed as well. That's kind of cool. When we max out the riding and the feeding of it, which I think I've done now. Oh, no, I haven't because there's still hearts coming off. Basically, the more we do this, it makes them faster. And when we max it out, this behemoth becomes a queen behemoth and it flies at maximum speed. So when I said it was slow before, we can luckily do something about this. But if it does take damage, the friendship value goes down. So you need to look after it. Hey! Okay, so regal friends till the very end. Befriend a behemoth to maximum friendship. But this is what it looks like now. Wait, let's let's ride this queen. Oh my god, that's so fast. Oh my god, that's so much better. Look at this thing. <laughs> look how fast this thing is. Oh my god, this is so cool. This is, honestly, I'm enjoying this dimension mod. Wait, I've got to take a screenshot of this. So this is kind of like one of those end game things you want to do with this dimension. Just get the beam out. Because it's probably one of the coolest features, I think, possibly, that the mod creators have added. Look how fast this is, man. That queen bee that we kicked out of the tower earlier just has nothing on this bee mount. Also, if you want to get up the friendship a little bit quicker, let me just get the honey bucket so it comes to me. If you want to get the friendship points up quicker, you could also use a royal jelly bucket or bottle. I think the bottle gives 200 friendship points. As you can see, speedy buzzy bees. By combining pollen and honey, create bee bread and feed it to bees until their maximum speed. Zoom. If you hold shift, you can feed without sitting on it too, which is kind of like a pretty cool tip. Next up, let's take a look at the honey slimes a little bit more close up. So we have the normal slime over here, which I guess has this pollen effect on it when it moves, just like the honey slimes. I guess we could try and go to a better place because the slimes are not really easy to see here. 
So these are the honey slimes that we saw earlier. So let me just spawn a few. So these honey slimes will spawn all throughout this dimension, usually from the honey brood blocks which you find around them. They will sometimes summon these. And basically, if we actually get a glass bottle, this is the unique part about this mob. If we use a glass bottle and right click, we can actually drain the honey from the honey slime. The slime is, it's a normal slime that's just being kind of covered in honey by going alongside it. When we right click on it, it fills the glass bottle and then the honey kind of drains off it. So we can do that to all of them. And it doesn't convert them back into normal slimes, but they kind of look like it. And then we get a bottle of honey. But I think, as you can see, as they jump onto the block, I think they might get the coat of honey back around them, but I'm not entirely sure. Now, when they're actually covered in honey, this makes the slimes fall from heightened heights and take no damage or reduce fall damage. This honey shell actually protects them. Now, if we get sugar, you can see they almost automatically started paying attention to me. Look. If I go close to them with sugar, they all just turn around and pay attention. That's because you can lure them and then feed it to them to breed them, okay? So you can see we have some red hearts here. So this is how we breed two honey slimes together. This is how the breeding system works with the honey slimes, you use sugar, okay? And that creates the baby slimes over here, which looks super cute. So now let's take a look at some of the items and blocks which we've not seen. So we have new types of honeycomb blocks. We have new stone types. We have some large super-sized candles, which I think are awesome. So you can see these huge candles along here. We have sugar water, which can be collected in a bucket. And royal jelly, which we can actually just pour down here. Now you can see this flows very slowly. It's very viscous and thick. And you can find this in those spires where the queen bee is that I showed you earlier. Then we have the bee queen spawn egg. So we can manually spawn all the mobs here. We have bee bread, which we can use also for breeding with the slimes. I think we can use that too, although I'm not quite sure. But we can also eat this. And it gives us effects like bee energized. And basically when we consume this, we get this from going inside this royal jelly fluid or eating this bee bread. And this just increases the flight speed of the flying mobs, which you also apply it to. So it's pretty useful. And also if we have the bumblebee chest plate, which I'm wearing right now, this gives us increased flying speed and flight duration too. So I think it also works with this mount, which I actually tamed earlier. Okay, so now I've showed you all of that, let's take a look at this armor. So you can see this enchanted armor, which I said I compared earlier, is already much better than the armor, which is obviously not enchanted. So let's go ahead and put some of this armor on over here. We'll put on some of these pieces which we found inside of the honey beehive. And this is the bee armor. Look how cool this bee armor is. And you can see we have a weapon over here. And then we can also put on our normal bee armor as a comparison to show you the normal set without enchantments over here. So this is what like the normal set plus an enchanted set looks like. But this was the Bumble Zone Dimension. So anyone who has a phobia of bees should not be playing this mod. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like and subscribe for more Minecraft mod showcases and top 10 mod videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.